Reports of a devil in Siberia's Lake Labinker date from the 19th century and have intrigued scientists for many decades. The inaccessible lake in the Saka Republic, Russia's largest and coldest region, was in March the scene of the deepest ever dive under ice in the world. Divers on a joint expedition by the Russian Geographic Society and Diving Sport Federation of Russia reached a depth of 59.6 meters, but their achievement also had a serious scientific purpose. Braving air temperatures as low as minus 50 Celsius and diving under tents erected on the ice, they took samples for examination by scientists which may prove a long-suspected underwater link between the Labinker and another similarly mysterious lake, Veroda, some 30 kilometers away. The divers were keenly aware of the age-old accounts of primeval monsters, perhaps relic ithosaurs, in both lakes. Ahead of the trip, the society said, apart from plans to set up a new record for under ice diving and to perform scientific research, the participants of the expedition want to check those legends about Labinsker Chert, the Limbinker Devil, a huge monster supposedly living in the lake. Dmitry Schiller, one of the divers who now holds the world record, admitted, We are familiar with the works of scientist Viktor Tverdoklovov, who in Soviet times gave credence to the monster claims about Labunker Lake, and of course we did think about that monster when we were there. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these animal stories every day. Now, back to the story. He also revealed, we did see mirages there, something like moving islands, but all of us know that it is a common thing in any northern area with lots of ice and snow, so it is not something special about Labinker. So what did they find underwater? My pictures show that we saw dogfish, said Alexander Gubin, head diver of Labinker Trip, president of Vologda Regional Diving Federation, who is also head of scientific diving commission of the Vologda branch of Russian Geographic Society. In fact, I photographed these dogfish not far from the bank in Lake Labinker. It was not deep there either, maybe four or five meters. We were just exploring the area near the banks together with another diver, Maxim. This dogfish was about 1.2 to 1.3 meters long. It is quite big for a dogfish, but almost all of this species in Labinker are of this size. I saw two more fish like this at the depth of 10 to 12 meters. These were the biggest creatures I met in the binker, but know that salmon trout fish can be found there too, and this fish can grow up to 2 meters. I presume some big salmon trout fish could have confused the locals, and this is where the rumors about the monster are coming from. Salmon trout is a very strong and active fish. It can actively move in the water and even jump a bit. I believe looking at it from a distance, one may well think something really huge is moving near the water surface. We did not see anything big in Veroda either. I am aware of those stories about the monster, but I am a realist. There is surely not enough food in the lake for some enormous dinosaur. So I did not have any weapon when I was diving. My camera is my main weapon. Actually, I wonder if the lenses telescoping out of my camera give me a feeling of safety as if it is a real weapon. But in general, I am a brave man. I have been next to a crocodile and once in the Caribbean off Cuba, a small shark attacked my camera. The lake is 14.3 kilometers long and 4 kilometers wide and averages 52 meters in depth, but has an unusual underwater fissure which reaches down to 80 meters. Some 5,000 kilometers east of Moscow is in the same district of the Saka Republic as Oymyakon, known as the Pole of Cold, the world's coldest human settlement. Reports about the devil, or monster, date from the 19th century and gained credence from a trip by Soviet geologist Tverdoklubov to the lake in the Stalin era. He wrote of the devil, There have been all sort of hypotheses around what kind of creature it could be, a giant pike, a relic reptile, or an amphibia. We didn't manage to prove or disprove these versions, we managed to find remains of jaws and skeleton of some animal. Associate Professor of Biogeography Lyudmila Emilimayova recorded several seriously big underwater objects with sonar readings on a trip to Labinker. She is not the only researcher to have done so. It was our fourth or fifth day at the lake when our echo sounding device registered a huge object in the water under our boat, she said. The object was very dense, of homogeneous structure, surely not a fish, nor a shoal of fish, and it was above the bottom. 
I was very surprised, but not scared and not shocked. After all, we did not see this animal. We only registered a strange object in the water. But I can clearly say, at the moment, as a scientist, I cannot offer you any explanation of what this object might be. The readings were repeated and she became convinced there was more than one large living object in the pure waters. I can't say we literally found and touched something unusual there, but we did register with our echo sounding device several seriously big underwater objects, bigger than a fish, bigger than even a group of fish. So dogfish or salmon trout, or is there something more devilish lurking in these twin lakes? There are certain to be further research trips to find out more. The March expedition will be remembered for the record-breaking dive. Bazina Ostoic of the World Underwater Federation, CMAS, who was on the trip, reported the success of the dive. A new world record of under-ice diving was set up by Dmitry Schiller and Alexander Gubin, she said. They dived down to 59.6 meters. This is a new world record and I am congratulating Russia and the whole world on it. The team reached the lakes on specially upgraded Kamaz trucks. The surface was frozen solid, enough to drive the trucks on the ice. Scientists from Crayolite Zone Biological Problems Institute of Siberian Academy of Science were working with the divers. The task was to study the hydro system of both lakes, to collect soil and water samples in the coldest season of the year, and also to study the human body activity and diving equipment in extreme weather conditions, with temperatures this winter going as low as minus 60 Celsius. Dmitry Schiller said, We did several dives at different depths, from open air and from a tent on the ice. We did one night deep dive. At each lake, we cut several ice holes for diving. We gathered water samples at different depths. In total, we did about 200 different measurements and took about 20 samples. The maximum depth we have managed was 59.6 meters. Baroda Lake is 30 kilometers from Labinker. The scientists suspect that the lakes are connected, that there is something like underground tunnels. Trying to understand the unique hydro system of these places, we needed to take some samples from Veroda too. The scientists never had such a chance previously and they asked us if we could make it and reach the second lake. He stressed that intriguing evidence was found that the claim of the lakes being linked may be true. Though apart by 30 kilometers, their water levels are the same. What we found in support of this idea is that the water level of both lakes is identical, which made us think about connecting vessels concept. He added, the Yakushin scientists are very grateful for our samples. They promised to tell us about the results in three months. I know that they are keen to study the living organisms which can survive in such conditions and to check what the fish is eating in those lakes because at first glance, food supply is very poor there. We were keen to find the crack that is supposed to be at the bottom of Lake Labenker. In this case, we would have tried to dive deeper, but unfortunately, we did not find it. Maybe this is the task for our next expedition to Labenker. Angelica Akuva, team member and Kamaz employee, explained, These 30 kilometers took about 20 hours. Literally, we were breaking through at a speed of 600 meters per hour. Locals say that the winter is very snowy this year. There is much more snow than usual. Gubin, who with Schiller set the new world record of under ice diving, said, Before the expedition, we contacted the world community of divers and asked if anybody had experience of diving in such cold conditions. We found out that nobody had it. We had to mix the gases in the conditions of very cold air temperatures and they just were not mixing in the right way. So when somebody is asking me if we met that Lumbinker monster, I am saying mixing those gases was my monster and it was a real one. My mistake in this mixing would have led to somebody's death. We trained in the cold white sea and managed to go down to 80 meters. There were always some difficulties, but we managed well. During dives into Labinker Lake, there were no emergencies, but the atmosphere was disturbed. All of us were worrying. For example, once the hoses became entangled, once the wind was so strong that it nearly carried away the tent above the ice hole. The water there is amazingly transparent, just like in Lake Baikal. But of course, it was dark at the bottom and we used lights. Unfortunately, we did not meet any unusual creature there, only these huge dogfish, so please enjoy my photographs. Safety coordinator Georgi Medinin said, We took water and soil samples from Labenker and Verota lakes. This was very important for the scientists who study the lakes and nature in this area. 
We will also share our results with other scientists, those who took part in Mars 500 project of a 500 days long flight to Mars. These scientists are interested in the experience of our divers because they study the ability of the human body to resist to the absolutely aggressive environment. Maxim Ashtakov, the first Russian to win the World Cup in sport diving and assistant on this expedition, said, I have never experienced driving on Kamaz trucks through the taiga before. It gives you adrenaline. Nobody before tried to dive in such extreme conditions. The water in the bunker was 1, 2 Celsius under the water. It was warmer than in the White Sea where they trained. There it was minus 2 Celsius. Air temperatures were about minus 50 Celsius with occasional wind. At one time, it was very strong wind and it nearly carried away the tent. Ali Karayev, head of the Magadan branch of Kamaz, one of the drivers, of course every Kamaz truck which comes from the factory to work in our conditions must be upgraded. It will be just impossible to use it here without such upgrades, like double glass cab, fuel heating, car batteries heating, extra heating for the cabin. Gubin, like others who travel to Labinker, feel a magnetic pull from the lake and is keen to return to explore further. Dr. Emilia Nova from the Biogeography Department of the Geographical Faculty of Moscow State University feels the same. She remains struck by historical accounts of monsters in Labinker and Veroda and believes they are credible. On the basis of sightings, there has been speculation that Labinker and Veroda, as well as dogfish and salmon trout, might be inhabited by a school of Ichosaurus, prehistoric marine reptiles resembling dolphins or sharks, or plesiosaurs, a popular theory concerning Nessie in Scotland, which is often depicted with a long neck. Another version has speculated that relic killer whales could have become marooned in Labinker. Some accounts even suggest the creature makes a hideous primeval cry as it attacks its prey. Personally, I do believe that when the information about something strange circulates among local people for so many years, it just can't be groundless. It means something is there, she said. I know the local people very well. They are ingenuous, but they do not lie, she said previously. Now she adds, I have been on a dozen expeditions to this region and I can say I know the character of local people quite well. They are emotional, but are not intended to show their emotions and they are very true and honest by nature, often more honest than is necessary. This is why I am not ready to reject all these stories. For her, another factor is how the stories of monsters and Yakusha relate solely to these two lakes out of more than 800,000 across this giant region. Another account of an entirely separate trip to the lake in August 2006, where researchers used a Hummingbird Piranha Max 215 portable fish finder, produced results echoing her findings. Images are available from this trip, but the identities of those who took part are hidden. The conditions were ideal, clear, cold, fresh water, no big waves, stone bottom without plants there, no engine on the boat, soft and slow moving. All this means there were almost no problems for the scanning, claimed one of those present. Often the device showed the long chain of big fish some 4 meters above the bottom of the lake, when the depth was about 30 to 45 meters. The further we went away from the shore, the deeper the lake was. At the moment there were no fish registered for a long period long, the screen was dead. But all of a sudden it blew up with signals about a huge shoal of fish, just like a cloud. Let me say a word about local fish. All kinds of fish here are predators. The bottom of the lake is dead. Stones with sand, very cold near the bottom, no plants. Fish predators just cannot swim all together, making such a huge shoal. Anybody familiar with zoology will understand what I mean. This is why it meant nothing else but the huge swimming object with some air inside. We went twice above the object. It was at the depth of 30 meters, where the floor was 50 meters below. The upper fish was at a depth of 25 meters, the lower fish at 32 meters. It suggests the object was 7 meters wide. What was it? We can't say. I switched off the fish ID and we watched just pure scanning. Soon we registered a shadow some 15 to 17 meters under our boat. It was about 6.5 meters long. It was pretty clear it was not a fish and not a tree. There cannot be fish that big and a log would have been registered in a different way. How can it swim under the water? The most active shadows or bodies were registered in certain parts of the lake when the depth was 42 to 60 meters. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with your friends and family. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.